Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, this weekend's uh, UFC card from a betting perspective. Um, I have to sh stop sharing my screen for a second, you know, we'll reshare it. Okay. Um, and we're going to be doing this again from a contrarian, uh, with a contrarian approach. Essentially, what we're trying to do is figure out which way the entire public has been leaning uh, the entire week and basically fade it. Uh, the idea is that with, you know, a tough vig of 20 cents, 30 cents or whatever, it's very difficult to just kind of out, kind of like out think like the entire crowd. But what you can do is get a good sense for where the biases are and where just kind of the, the narratives are and fade those. And that's been very, very uh, profitable for us since we started doing this. Now, we're doing this kind of late in the week, and I've just watched and absorbed way too much content this week in general, just because I have this live final that I'm dealing with in, in the daily fantasy space. So I have absorbed just so much of the of the public perception uh, on these fights, and that's really going to help out this uh, the uh, the betting breakdown because you know that that's that's really key to figuring out who to bet and what props are good values and bad values is to absorb as much information of where the public is is leaning and what the public believes and what of it is just kind of kind of cutesy nonsense versus actual data. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and do this. And again, it's kind of usually a fun breakdown. And we did pretty well last week. And hopefully we'll continue to do uh, do well this week. Um, so again, here are the rules. We are going to be betting on every fight on the card and we're going to be betting on one unit per fight. And we have 14 fights, so it's 14 bets, and it's going to be 180 per unit. And again, that's not the greatest uh, money management uh, system in the world, but that's just the fun we're going to have. We're going to have all kinds of action already with this live final seat. Uh, we're going to probably have DFS act, DFS, DFS action also, and we're going to add some betting to this as well. Now, again, this is an 11.30 a.m. start, so keep that in mind. And let's just get into this. All right, so first uh, first fight of the night, we have Cody Brundage versus uh, Cedric Dumas. And this is a Cody Brundage is a late notice replacement. And I will tell you this, for someone who is like a 180 favorite or 175 favorite, I'm never, I haven't heard so much hate for this guy. I mean, all I've heard all week is that, that his cardio is terrible. He has a terrible fight IQ. Uh, he, he just throws fights away. And then I've also heard that the Cedric Dumas, if, if people weren't, you know, weren't stung enough from chasing him last time he fought, he was like minus 200. Now they're saying, well, uh, now the, the odds have flipped and now we're getting all this line value on Dumas and Dumas has all of a sudden become like one of the more popular underdogs there is. So, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to take Cody Brundage. Now, the only thing is that, what you're hearing is that it's a very binary outcome that if Cody Brundage does not finish him in basically the first round or round and a half, um, that he just basically has no chance. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify then probably the, the one approach to this fight that's probably overlooked with the idea being that it's probably over under you know, undervalued. And what we're going to do is we're going to take Cody Brundage by decision. Cody Brundage by decision is plus 700. And the path to that is he basically wrestles him, takes him down, can't finish him, but just kind of lays on him for like three rounds. And I think that's very, very possible. So we're going to go Cody Brundage by decision for 180. Now, it might not let us bet this uh, right away because we're connected to Zoom, but we will bet this after. All right, so next we have Clayson Rodriguez versus... Uh, Cedric, uh, excuse me, versus um, uh, Ty, uh, Tesuro Tyra. And you're getting a little bit of, of love on the Rodriguez side, basically saying that the line is too wide, that Rodriguez has done nothing wrong, and he's actually, the, the money's come in on him going from like plus 280 to plus like 240 or so. Um, the the props that people are on are either Rodriguez kind of early or Tyra by submission. So the really, the only thing you can really do here is play either Tyra by knockout. Cause that, I think that is definitely an overlooked, uh, an overlooked piece to this. And as I've been saying the last, since I've been doing these, 
MMA is not just a binary sport. It, it's not just one guy can win one way or the other guy wins the other way. Sure, it's more likely that Tyra, if he wins, wins by submission. But there are some variations where he does kind of get on top and win by knockout. Um, and there are variations where Rodriguez can just basically survive his submissions, be better striking, and win a decision. So let's take a look at those two as our possibilities. So we have Rodriguez. Let's look at him first. Rodriguez by decision is plus 600. Or you could have Tyre. Oh, my God. Tesoro Tyra by KO is plus 600. So those are those would be the two I think would be over undervalued, and they're exactly the same. So we're just going to have to pick one. Um, let's go with actually – see, I'm not convinced that they're going to give Rodriguez a decision if he gets there just because Tyra is like, kind of like the hype machine. So let's go with Ty Tesoro Tyra by KO for 180. Uh, moving on, we have uh, Jamel Emmers versus Jack Jenkins. And, you know, Jenkins has been come, kind of like a sort of a popular underdog as well this week. Um, they've been saying that his wrestling is good. That, But I, I tell you, I watched his last fight, and it's not as if his wrestling was that good. He just kind of took the guy to the ground sort of by accident. Um, the other thing I've heard a lot this week is that Emmers has kind of a low fight IQ that he could mess this fight up. So I am going to go ahead and take Emmers. Um, the only question is how we're going to do this. I mean, we could play Emmers inside the distance. That's something that not that many people have been on. Um, let's take a look at these odds. Emmers winning method. Emmers by, you got to look at double chance here. By TKO or submission is plus 225. That's pretty reasonable. Compared decision is minus one. Uh, well, submission or decision is minus 120. If it's him by actual decision, it's plus 330. No, plus 130. So that's no good. So we're going to play Emmers inside the distance plus 225. And again, you'll notice this. These are going to be probably sides that not that many people have recommended this week. And that's sort of the idea. Find a plausible outcome, which is just ignored, with the idea being that that is what's going to be the best value. All right, so this one's sort of easy for me. So you have Trevor Peak against Jose Mariscal, and this is supposed to be a, a complete car crash. Um, this fight is either going to obviously finish in the first round or maybe the second, because Trevor Peak is just going to completely bring the heat. Um, so anything, honestly, with peak round one is probably going to be overvalued. Anything with, with peak round two even is going to be overvalued. I've heard a lot of that. Obviously, this fight going inside the distance is going to be overvalued. The only things that you can play here, as far as I'm concerned, is the fight to go over um, or maybe Mariscal in the first round. Um, so let's take a look at some of these odds here. Um, fight lines. Actually, look at round props. So Mariscal round one is plus 275. That's actually interesting let's look at the over under uh even the over one and a half it's only plus 150 um but that's not bad so either over one and a half or mariscal round one it's one other thing i want to look at just for just for fun what about the fight goes to decision like in general, it says fight props. Fight to go the distance is plus only plus 350. I would probably want a little more than that. So let's just go the over one and a half. Uh, over one and a half plus 150. Okay, Jal Gus Zumagulov versus Joshua Van. So you have Zumagulov who basically the judges, this is this, I've been waiting for this one. So Zuma Gulov, the judges apparently hate. Okay. So every time he gets in a decision, he loses a split decision. So immediately I know what I'm going to do here. And that's, we're going to take Zuma Gulov by decision. Now, again, it's not the greatest odds in the world, but it just makes so much sense. This kind of, uh, 
uh, from a contrarian take perspective, then we just have to do it here. So Zhumagulov by decision, just plus 100, good enough for me. Um, okay, moving on to Tabitha Ricci versus Julian Robertson. This has been really, really well um, uh, debated across the industry. And you can hear just as many takes for Tabitha Ricci as you can for Julian Robertson. Um, so you're not going to get any real value on either fighter. Um, I think it's been pretty well analyzed to death here. But what you are hearing is that Jillian is the is the girl with the better path to a submission um, or a finish inside the distance. What you're not getting is not that much uh, not that much steam on on Ricci inside the distance or Ricci by submission or Ricci by KO. So we're going to take a shot at that, and and this is going to be like very very risky, um, just because it's very unlikely to happen. But you look at some of these props here. You have Ricci by KO is like plus 1100. Or you have Ricci by submission is plus 650. I think either of those are, are probably pretty good. Maybe we should be a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, risk averse. Just go by either. Um, see, winning method. So like Ricci inside the distance, for example, plus 450. Yeah, let's do that. So Ricci inside the distance for 180. Okay, moving on. And we got a lot of fights to get to. We have Rebecca versus Loic Rajabov. Um, there, you've heard a little bit on both sides here. Um, so, I mean, you're, you're hearing that Rajabov with his big takedown upside um, could be a good underdog. You're hearing that Rebecca has is good grappling too. So if the grappling... Uh, cancels out. Rebecca might have the better striking. The point is, is that both sides seem reasonable. So you're not going to get any real value on either side as far as like picking your fighter. But uh, what you can do is bet this fight just to go to the distance. Okay. Um, and again, this is this is not my strongest take because even this is not exactly the the you know too far off the board. But I think that's probably the side of this that's going to be the least expected. Um, I'm sorry, the fight does not go the distance. I apologize. Um, so we're going to bet this fight just to finish. And let's take a look at this. Oh, we got to get to the right fight. Uh, Rebecca Loic inside the distance. And I don't know who's going to do it inside the distance, but uh, what is this? Round props? No, fight props. Fight to finish plus 120. Um, moving on. Randy Brown versus Wellington Termon. This has not been analyzed all too much, um, except to say that, uh, you know, that Randy Brown is just, you know, kind of a lock. <laughs> I, I've been seeing a lot of Wellington Termon love here. Um, so I guess that would be the contrarian take, but this is, and this is going to be sort of difficult to explain, but if the odds were a little bit thinner, in other words, if it weren't so, so big, I would say maybe it's kind of a, a, a trap line and I would try to take Termin. but here, I think that this is just kind of fair. You know what I mean? So I'm not really getting any big contrarian vibes here. So in the absence of that, what we're going to do is, is bet on the side that has been less discussed, and that would be Randy Brown inside the distance. So let's just do that. Randy Brown inside the distance, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to pick around or anything like that. So Randy Brown inside the distance, so that would be either KO or submission, just a plus 120. It's such a stupid bet that it's just probably going to win. Okay, uh, moving on. We have Neil Magny versus Phil Rowe. This is, I mean, this is to me kind of easy. You have Neil Magny, who's going to apparently put this veteran lesson on Phil Rowe. Um, Phil, uh, Neil Magny is not good against the top competition, but according to the, all the public, he's really just good against these kind of lower level fighters. So Magny's just going to use his experience and wear on him 
and get the win pretty, pretty safely. So we are going to take Phil Rowe. Phil Rowe plus the 145. And in a weird way, um, Phil Rowe plus 145 is better than Phil Rowe by KO because I have heard some people saying that if Phil Rowe wins, it might be by KO. So we're going to presume that is even slightly overvalued. So we're going to take Phil Rowe plus the 145 for 180. Okay, uh, moving on, we have Brendan Allen versus Bruno Silva. Um, so apparently this is going to be sort of a binary fight. So if Brendan Allen can get the grappling going, he'll probably submit Bruno Silva pretty early. Or if Bruno Silva can, can you know, keep this fight on the feet, he's going to KO Brandon Allen. So what this means is that Brandon Allen by submission, can't bet it. Bruno Silva by KO, can't bet it. The only thing you could bet here is somebody by decision. And we're going to really take a, a, a tough stand here. This is really rough. But... I mean, this is really literally throwing money in the garbage, but it's just such a such an offbeat play that no one's playing that it just has to be good value in there somewhere. And the idea is that even though Brandon Allen gets some takedowns, that that Bruno Silva does enough in the striking to win kind of a rough decision. So what we're gonna do, and this is like almost impossible, but we're gonna go. Bruno, wow, Bruno Silva by decision is almost the same as Brendan Allen by decision. I know it's going to be somebody by decision. Boy, oh boy. How can I bet this? How can I bet Bruno Silva by decision at almost the same price as Brendan Allen by decision? Because the Brendan Allen by decision makes sense the way it could happen. He could just take him down, but just, you know, and control him, but just not submit him. I mean, that's, that seems much more logical, doesn't it? So, because that's more logical, no, we are going to do this. We'll, we'll take, I can't do this. We're, this is just way too much of a better price. We're going to take Brandon Allen by decision for 180. All right. Um, moving on, we have um, Austin Lane versus Justin Taffa. So we have Justin Taffa, who is a, a allegedly going to either knock Austin Lane out in the first round, okay, yeah. or or uh, Austin Lane can maybe take him down and control him and, and maybe get a submission, or it becomes a greasy kind of like three round decision, okay. Those are like all the only things that I've heard could happen. What I have not heard is that this makes it to the second round and Tafa wins anyway. So that's what we're going to try here. We're going to try Tafa round prop, Tafa round two, plus 650 for 180. Okay, uh, moving on. David Onama versus Gabriel Santos. All right, this is this is this is a this is a classic one. You have Gabriel Santos. It, he's he's coming off of the robbery fight, and I love fading guys off the robbery fight. And what that means is that he comes off a fight where everybody was sure that he won, but he got robbed, and they you know gave the decision to the other guy, and everybody always just bets these guys in their next fights. Um, they give people way too much credit for losses. That's just kind of like the idea here. And Onama, you know, he was like five milliseconds away from knocking out Nate Landwehr in the first round. And if, in fact, he puts like one more punch on him and he KOs, up, KOs him, the price of this is completely different. Okay. So I think that the their value just has to be in Onama here. So we're going to take David Onama, um, nothing fancy here, just plus the... 185. Probably should just bet it by KO, but I guess it's possible he wins the decision. Let's just take the plus 185. Um, just a couple of more, right? Yeah, so we have Amanda Hibas versus Macy Barber. Oh. 
So this fight has actually not been the most analyzed. People have spent so much time on this Julian Robertson fight and and the and the uh, and and sort maybe the main a little bit. Um, and the uh, one other fight they've talked about the the Peak fight a lot, the Rebecca fight a lot, the Brundage fight a lot, but the Hebas Macy Barber fight. I mean, I'm really not seeing that much love one way or the other. If anything, you're getting a little bit of. Actually, there's really nothing. I mean, honestly, neither of these fighters is getting more popularity than they're supposed to. So what we're going to probably just do is just pet the fight to go inside the distance. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, because what I am hearing is that either he boss kind of controls you on top or uh, Macy Barber just kind of just does enough striking wise. But I haven't heard this fight to finish. So let's just go with that one. Uh, let's see. Fight lines. Just popular actually um not money line fight props is that what it is yeah fight to go the distance no plus 140 and finally in the main event we have um Ilya Tapuria versus Josh Emmett and, you know, you're, you're getting a little bit of the dog money here on Emmett here. Um, now, what we have to do, and this is kind of like our, uh, the way we like to do things, is that we have to assume that we're going to lose every single fight on this card beforehand. Because we've made such stupid bets. So we have to bet, we, we can't bet anything that's less than 13 to 1. Because we always have to give the illusion that we're never out of this. Even if we lose all 12 of them. So let's think about the fight before we see what's 13 to 1. So here's what I've heard. On the Ilya side, I hear that Emmett is just washed, that Ilya could do whatever he wants, and he's just going to just, you know, e either uh, just KO him or just do a grappling heavy game plan and then submit him. Okay. Then you have Josh Emmett, and he's basically looking for that, that KO shot. Um, so basically, people that are betting Emmett are either playing the money line or Emmett in round one, or maybe maybe round two, but mostly round one or round two, or certainly Emmett by KO. So those, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to play those. We're just going to have to pick around here and see what's over 13 to 1, and see what makes sense that is not part of the – of that normal, uh, what you call it, uh, narrative. So what you can do, you'll your round four. That could be really interesting. The idea that Emmett can stay with him striking, stay with him striking, has the heart of a lion, and then round four, it just it just finally goes to Puria's way. That's possible. Or uh, Emmett round one plus 1,200. I mean, just takes one shot, right? Emmett round two plus 1,600. I should probably play both of these things. To pour your round four plus 1,600. Or Emmett round one or two. Well, we can't do round one. It's not big enough. So either Emmett round two or Tapuria round four. Let's, let's go with the safer one. We'll go Tapuria round four or 16, plus 1,600. So let's just kind of review these atrocious bets that we made. Uh, Brundage by decision, that's pretty funny, plus 700. Ty, Tyra by KO, I mean, he's a submission guy. He's going to take the back. How is he going to KO him? Well, let's see if that happens one every six times. Emmer's... Uh, Inside the distance, plus 225. I mean, the least the least talked about spot on the card, so there's no way this can happen. Peak Mariscal, the car crash fight, it's going to finish in the first round. And if so, we lose. Juma Gulov never wins by decision, except maybe this time. Tabitha Ricci uh, is going to be the first girl to ever submit Julian Robertson. Well, if not, maybe she gets the K, plus 450. Uh, Rebecca Lois is going to be a nice competitive fight, so we're just going to hope that, you know, it just that uh, does not make it to the final bell. Randy Brown by TKO, plus 120. No real reason to bet that one, but we just did it anyway. 
Uh, Neil Magny is going to teach Phil Rowe a lesson, the vet lesson. Well, if he saw, does so, we lose. Brandon Allen is, is you know, he's going to – it's either going to be, obviously, Brandon Allen by submission or uh, Bruno Silva by knockout. So we're going to take Allen by decision plus 350. Justin Tapa is either going to win round, win round one or – Either he's either going to win in round one, or it's going to be a sloppy decision. Or if that doesn't work, at least you have the possibility of Lane winning. No, we're going to take top of round two. Uh, David Onama, uh, terrible fight IQ, overhyped. Gabriel Santos got robbed, and he's going to show everybody who's boss, except for us who have Onama at plus 185. Uh, he boss Barber, uh, women's fight, probably going to go to decision. If it does, we lose. And Ilya Teporia, uh going to run over him in round one or two, or Emmett's going to get the early KO. Uh, well, if that happens, we lose two. Because once you've lost all 13 of these other fights, you need to get your six, your money back. So we're going to take Teporia round four plus 1,600. Uh, and that will do it. Uh, I'm going to put this up on the site. Big, big, big day as far as the fights go. Good luck, everybody.